Parental discretion is advised. Novo Nordisk is proud to present the following DLife TV special, presented with limited commercial interruption. I remember my first shot of insulin. I was 17. I had felt horrible for months, and when I went into the hospital, they gave me a shot of this mysterious something. And an hour later, I went up to the nurse and I said, whatever that is that you gave me, I want that. But a hundred years ago, diabetes was a swift, brutal death sentence. Imagine a fatal disease with no real treatment and a life expectancy of as little as three weeks upon diagnosis. The discovery of insulin is truly one of the greatest achievements in modern medicine. And as you'll see, it's also one of the most compelling human dramas of our time. Diabetes, as you know, has been around and known for about 2,500 years. And yet insulin has been around for perhaps 100 years. It's a disease where your pancreas dies and it doesn't make insulin anymore. There was no way of recovering from it diabetes, so I was very fortunate that insulin was discovered. For nearly 3,000 years, cultures around the world have tried to define diabetes. All sorts of names describe the condition that left patients emaciated, unable to process food or drink. Regardless of name, diabetes held one reality, a certain early and painful death for the person afflicted. It was a pretty frightening and pretty clearly recognizable disease. And it was also a disease that until the 19th century, physicians could do nothing about. Put that in perspective, a disease that's been around for two, three thousand years, and yet most of what we know about both what diabetes it is and how we treat it has occurred over the past hundred years. So the advances over the past hundred years have been phenomenal. By the late 1800s, industrial progress offered countless improvements to the way people lived, but none of them changed the brutal realities for sufferers of diabetes. Medical researchers all over the world struggled just to define, let alone cure, this devastating disease. In 1889, Oscar Minkowski discovered that if you took the pancreas out of a dog, it instantly developed severe diabetes and, and quickly died. Minkowski discovered that the pancreas has two functions, to aid digestion and to produce the hormone that regulates blood sugar. The speculation was that there was maybe something being made in the islets of Langerhans that was the mysterious something. The mysterious something was insulin, and as the world moved faster, doctors around the globe raced to unlock its secrets. Each new discovery was a small step that other researchers could build upon, but despite this progress, little changed in diabetic treatment. By the dawn of the 20th century, doctors were still prescribing all sorts of diets to keep people with diabetes alive. Gradually it was realized that the, the key to dieting for diabetes was simply total calorie control. And that if you couldn't burn up uh, normal amounts of food, you should only be given as much food as you could burn up. And according to the leading diet therapist at the time, Dr. Frederick Allen, if you had diabetes, you could only burn up 800 to 1,000 calories a day for six days and even less on the seventh. Dr. Allen talked about it as an undernutrition approach. The patients talked about it as starvation. Very few patients were able to stay alive an extra year or two buying time desperately hoping that before you starve to death, something better will turn up. When World War I arrived in 1914, it consumed all available resources. There was no money left for the medical researchers racing to find an effective treatment. And patients continued to waste away. Alan and the other doctors had said to the patients, hold on, hold out as long as you can, because as long as you're alive, there's hope. 
There was no treatment in sight, and diabetes continued to ravage its victims, sometimes striking even the most privileged of people. A little Elizabeth Hughes became diabetic in 1918. Her father, Charles Evans Hughes, was a great figure in American political history. He ran for the presidency. He served as chief justice. So the Hughes are right at the top of American society. But whatever the family's stature, Elizabeth's parents had a daughter with diabetes. They brought her to Dr. Allen, who immediately put her on his famous diet. She started dieting about early 1919. She was 12 years old, weighed 75 pounds. By late winter of 1921, her weight was in the low 50 pounds, and for weeks on end, she would be held to 350 to 400 calories a day. That's everything. My diet is going beautifully, as usual. And the way things look now, I'm sure Dr. Allen, when he does see me, will have a good report to make. I'm gaining in strength. Elizabeth Hughes became the prize case. A well-disciplined little girl who followed her diet uh, absolutely to the letter, except once at Thanksgiving. She snitched a piece of turkey skin and was caught and bawled out and never did it again. Nobody would have guessed that Elizabeth's strength and spirit would keep her alive through the end of the war, but it did. Now she and countless other diabetes sufferers prayed for a medical miracle to emerge. In the summer, I believe, of 1921, she resolved that she would not lose the ability to walk, no matter how weak and thin she got. My muscles are very weak, but I practice steps and take exercise every day to help that now. And as At I the said, end of 1921, she was still able to walk, even though by this time she was little more than a living human skeleton. At the same time, a Canadian surgeon named Fred Banting was returning from the war. He was 30 years old, broke, had never even treated anyone with diabetes. But a strong will, big dreams, and destiny would intertwine he and Elizabeth, forever changing the course of modern medicine. Diabetes is reaching epidemic proportions around the globe, and its rate of rise continues to increase. In the United States alone, there are nearly 25 million people with diabetes, and nearly 6 million of those don't even know it. Diabetes does not know boundaries of age, gender, ethnic background, or country of origin. And that's a real problem. Nova Nordis is working to change diabetes every day. Our focus is on the person with diabetes, and that could be you. That focus drives us in terms of the development of new insulins and other products for diabetes, including patient-friendly devices to allow insulin and other drugs to be administered more easily. We have the largest portfolio of insulins in the market with a basal insulin, a short-acting insulin, and a mixed insulin that allow patients to achieve the kind of diabetes control that they deserve. And that's why Nova Nordisk is committed to developing resources, educational materials, and providing initiatives that allow patients, their family members, and their healthcare professionals to work together to defeat diabetes and to improve the outcomes for the individual patient.